Yeah, it, but then if you go to Solomon's prayer of dedication for the temple, mm -hmm. right? And this is really because I knew nothing about Noahides. I'd never, I had gotten interested in spiritual things. I got back into the Bible. I had the problems that I have with the New Testament. And I was finding, mm -hmm. reading what at the time I would only call the Old Testament. And mm -hmm. when you get to Solomon's prayer, he prays for foreigners who are passing through the land, see the temple, that they'll pray to God, but mm -hmm. they go back home. Right. He doesn't say that they'll make a sacrifice, that they'll come in, get circumcised, make a sacrifice, join the covenant. Um, he seems to see there being a separate plan for foreigners who will continue on as foreigners living in their land, but they will be worshiping the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Do you read it that way? No, I don't read it that way. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's uh, I. I don't fall with the majority in this. I think that the idea of foreigners, when it's mentioned in Tanakh primarily, is people in the covenant who are outside of the land of Israel. It says, I believe in Isaiah 56, that he says, let the nochri, let the, the, the foreigner um, not say that God would exclude me from his covenant. Would, when he keeps his Sabbath and he circumcised himself and the such, saying that foreigner back then just means that you weren't a native to the land of Israel, but didn't really mean that you weren't part of that covenant. You could have been part of the covenant and not been nationally part of the land of Israel. Throughout history, the vast majority of those in the covenant lived outside of the land. But, I mean, it's neither here or there. I also disagree that uh, the inhabitants of the Nineveh in the book of Jonah were Gentiles. That could have very, very easily have been some sort of nation or kingdom made up of converts. The notion of righteous Gentiles don't doesn't literally appear in what Christians call the Old Testament. There's hints to it here and there, and I and I personally believe that God will reward those um, based off of ethics, um, and not necessarily um, only those who adhere to ceremonial laws as well. Right. I do believe that, but it's hard for me to say that it's it's something that's clear in the Bible. It seems that in the Bible, God only gives one standard, only one way to please God. And I believe in the Noah laws, but only as a set of laws developed by the rabbis to adjudicate Gentiles. Right. But it was never something for them to aspire to. It seems that there is one one standard. That's the Torah standard. And then there's everything else. However, we see that God does punish individuals before the Torah was given. So that, that could be telling us that there is an ethical bare minimum of, of uh, what God will tolerate in society, right? That could could have been what led to the rabbis to developing these Noah laws. We know we can't adjudicate people living in the land of Israel if they didn't accept the Torah, right? And the Torah does talk about Gentiles among us, whether uh, it's a Gentile that we give what's called nevela to, animals that die on their own. Uh, but it seems that not, ev not everyone within the land was meant to keep the the commandments that we received on Mount Sinai. And so Gentiles could live among us and be tolerated, but that doesn't mean that it becomes like the fourth holy house of Israel, which is essentially what the Noahide movement teaches.